Hello Internet. Today we're going to talk about a new model for Sentence Transformer. Last time I showed you about Sentence Bird, a sentence embedding. We had a look at the transformer-based denoising autoencoder. And today we're going to focus on the latest and the bleeding edge of research in sentence embedding. And it is called Generative pseudo-labeling for unsupervised domain adaptation of dense retrieval in information retrieval. Of course, generative pseudo-labeling has its own GitHub page and here you see the code. So if you're interested to install it, just you say pip install gpl and then you have the code ready. Notice that the contributors are Kexin Wong and D. Patrick. Of course, there is, as you can see here, a publication, a cheap uh, archive, and this is by Kaxin Wang and uh, Niels Reimer. And as you can see here, if you download the PDF, you have here access to the whole theory uh, about GPL. And if you have a different look at this, you can really learn all the details you're interested in this. And I will refer explicitly to this document. So we're looking for the code, but to make it really easy, if you're interested in the code, what we do, we import a toolkit. Toolkit is part of GPL that you have uh, pip installed. There we have the negative minor, we have the margin distillation loss, we have our pseudo labeler. Everything is pretty fine for us, so it is pretty easy. And if you look here at our training uh, command G, it is at the one hand easy and a little bit complicated. So you see we have here the path to the generated data as a string, the output directory is a string, of course we have evaluation, and then we have our first model, and this is a distilled base, BERT base model, so beautiful. But then you see here as a generator, we have here a T5 generator from Google, a text-to-text -text generator, and we have not a buy encoder, but a cross encoder. And the reason for this will become uh, clear very soon, then, of course, you have the different batch size, the size generation, you have the pooling layer, you have the maximum sequence length defined, you have the queries per passage, you have the GPL steps, and you have retrievers. And you, now you might say, hey, why I need retrievers for this? Why I need an MS Marco Distilled Base version 3 retriever? And hey, I even have some K values for this. And yes, you do, but step by step. The first step is, of course, we have a JSON uh, line data file where we have our original data. And this is not an easy part, I will show you in the next video. But notice we have here, uh, we read in here this particular file. We have a hard negative mining. This will be done for us with the negative miner, with the function I showed you from the toolkit. We have the pseudo labeling. This is also done with a, um, a function in the toolkit. And then we have our model. We trained a model. We generated with a margin, a margin MSS loss function. So very familiar. You have your data set, your train data set, you have your data loader, and then you have your model.fit command. And you have your train data loader, you have your train loss, you have your number of epochs, you have the steps per epoch, you have your warm up, you have your checkpoint, you have your output. And this is it. You will say, hey, this looks quite easy. What's the complication with it? Well, you can even do the evaluation. This is all beautiful. But as I will show you, before we add all these different arguments, we have to understand what those arguments are doing. So therefore we have to dive into theory. So you might say, hey, great, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And of course, because we are here in the domain of uh, domain adaptation, this means we wanna have a text embedding model that adapts to our specific text domain. Here in this example, you can see that my domain is particle physics, but a lot of uh, language models or sentence transformers have been trained on, I don't know, the pile or some Reddit commands or the whole of Wikipedia. But particle physics has a lot of 
very specific expression, very specific sentences. So I want to inject the knowledge of particle physics in my sentence transformer. How to do that? Now, another problem is that we have without labeled training data. This means we are here at the unsupervised learning branch where no human sit down and took one sentence and give it a, a number, took the next sentence and give it a notation or whatever. We have millions of sentences without some training data. So what we're going to do is we have now domain adaptation and we're going to combine a query generator with a pseudo labeling from a cross encoder. This means we generate queries for each text passage of the unlabeled corpus. So if you want to say it in a very simple terms, we use an AI system to generate some data that could go as a training data for the main artificial intelligence system. So AI trains an AI. This is our idea. We create the label data ourselves. Four steps. We have a pre-trained Google T5 encoder decoder who creates the query for us. And then B, and this is an important step, we mine some negative passages. We are searching for exactly some negative passages and I'm going to show you in a second what I mean. Then C, we apply a cross encoder. Notice that it is not a B encoder, but a cross encoder because it has a better performance to score each query passage pair. So for each query that has been generated by our Google T5 text to text, we have now a text passage. And this is a pair. And then we train a model with a very specific loss function. Let's have a look at this in detail. Pseudo labeling. Uh, you might say, what the hell is pseudo labeling? Now, it is an important step because the negative mining step retrieves passages that are partly or highly relevant to our generated query. We need more information. And how we get more information? So we can identify additional passages and teach the text embedding model that these passages are also relevant for the given query. This is the way we introduce new domain knowledge in our sentence embedding in our sentence transformers in SBIRT. Have a look at this. This is from the original publication. And it is beautiful because we have a query. And then we have a positive answer, a positive part of a text, of the text corpus, a passage, a text passage, which is the answer. And in the old system, you can see here on the uppermost right column, we have a one, this is true, and then all other answers, we have zeros. So there was one right and everything else was wrong. Now, the world is not black and white. So what we do now is we're looking for hard negative answers. This means, and this is the last line in this matrix representation, that you look for something that gives us also a partial redefinition, an addition. And if you look at the ranking and you say the positive has a score of 10, you can see that our hard negative has a score of 7. So given from, I don't know, 0 to 10, a 7 is really also important for the system to learn and not just one right answer to 10. We also have then other sentences that also have a high ranking. And of course, we have easy negatives that are so far off. They are also important. But what we are looking for are those hard negatives. Again, what are those hard negatives? We have to understand this. We have a triple. And the triple consists of the anchor. This is, if you want, the question we have. Then the positive text passage, this is the right answer. And then we have some negative. And the negative is important that we have 
not just one right and all the rest is negative, but that we also have hard negatives because the quality of the hard negatives is important to increase the performance of our artificial intelligence systems. Now, in the old times, this means 2021, the solution to get good hard negatives was denoising. This means we have a cross encoder, this has we have cross attention of each and every word in our, our query, in our passage, a perfectly cross attention. So, an example. A, this is our query if you want. How many planets are in the solar system? The positive, the right answer, in quotation mark, is there are nine planets in our solar system. And yes, I do like Pluto. Now, what we are looking for is a hard negative that is also close or similar to the positive answer, but does not match the absolute question. So, for example, we're looking for a negative answer. The Earth is the third planet in our solar system between Mars and Venus. So there's a partial definition, a partial answer to the question how many planets in our solar system, but it is not identical to the positive answer, but it is really close by, semantically close by answer. It provides additional information. And Imagine this is, I'm not uh, looking for particle physics, imagine I'm looking for astronomy. You can see if I have a lot of those hard negative answers, text passages to my query, the system learns those hard negatives, it is important those hard negatives are there, and then I can learn a lot of additional astronomical knowledge and I can encode it in my sentence transformers if I have a good quality in my hard negatives. So, how to mine those hard negatives? I already showed you. You are looking for uh, the distribution of a, a, of a point, a set of points in a vector space, and then you are looking for the top 50 or top 100 similar uh, text passages. And you can select from those close by to our anchor randomly some numbers. Again, let's summarize where we have what we have achieved so far. We have an artificial intelligence system, and this is first step, this still BERT. This is our pre-trained model, our BERT model that we use for the sentence transformer. Then to generate queries for this methodology. We use a T5 query generator trained on a particular data set MS Marco. And you can see here in Hugging Face, we have those uh, generator already predefined and preloaded for us. So we just have to download it. We have to use it. Then comes the interesting part to retrieve the hard negatives. And we do this with uh, dense retrievers. Or if you want student retrievers, using a Cosan similarity trained system also on MS Marco. And here we have MS Marco Distilled Bird Base version 3. And then we have the hot negatives. And now we have to encode them for this pseudo labeling. We need now also a pre trained, pre defined cross encoder that is better than a bi encoder to get really to look for a particular those hard negative answers that we are looking for. So, this is it. Now we have a solution. We have a trained, uh, a learned data set we can now use for our main AI. But, and you will have spotted it, there's another problem. If we have the cross encoder, we have thresholds. What threshold values should we use? very high threshold, very low threshold, who defines the best threshold for a particular system? Let's say astronomy, particle physics. What is an adequate threshold? How is it defined? What are the metaparameters? You can play around, but there's a better solution. And we're going to apply this better solution here. And the solution is called margin MSE loss function. Now, what 
is this margin MSE? It is a function that is also already encoded in sentence transformer, so you just can call it with a piece of code. Beautiful. But what is the function of this? Well, it uses a powerful cross encoder to soft label our pairs of query passage, query passage. And then it teaches a dense retriever, a dense student retriever to mimic the score margin between the positive and negative query passage pairs. So it learns. If you want to have the formula for this, well, here is it. And if you want to dive a little bit into this, no problem. We compute the distance of the cross encoder CE scores of CE query positive minus CE query negative. And then what we do, we compute the distance of the embeddings for the query positive and take the dot product, compute the dot product of this minus the dot product of query embedded and positive embedded to get the distance. And what this margin MSE does now is the embeddings should have the same distance as the cross encoder scores. So you just compare those, those two systems and when they match, you say, hey, now we have the perfect uh, parameters. Summary. The pseudocode, the pseudocode for GPL. Here we go. We have our data. And we have to have a very specific defined training data set for this unsupervised learning. And this will be the topic in the next video that I show you how to encode your raw data into the specific form that we need. So we have our data and we train a buy encoder and we have a multi-natured negative loss function. But we also train our data with a cross encoder who is more powerful, better. From the buy encoder, we mine those close points to our anchor we look at the vicinity, at the epsilon vicinity of our specific anchor, and we look at all the, 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 the cloud sets in an epsilon environment, and we mine those close points with a buy encoder. And then we combine now the cross encoder with those close points and we classify them with a cross encoder. Having classified them, we train a buy encoder with a margin MSE. So here you can see that we use quite a lot of uh, sentence transformers, pure transformers, but, and you might say, hey, we have an AI more or less that trains an AI that defines a learning data set for this main AI. So we have an AI feeding an AI and the AI is constituted of predefined and pre-trained bird models and uh, pooled and sentence transformers with different pooling methodologies and pooling layers and aggregation layers. Is there a probability that also the arrow, that the margin of arrow is getting worse? Well, if you fine-tune this system cleverly and if you understand how this system work, you can choose the parameter of the system to really get astonishing results that are better than the average results you get with other methods. And this is why this is really currently the leading and bleeding edge of research in sentence transformers. I think this is it for today. This is the introduction video to this topic. Uh, you had a look at the code. And next time I will show you, if you have your raw data, how we're going to prepare our specific data set that we need for this GPL methodology. And I think this is more or less uh, the most complicated part to find the right representation and find the right parameter. We will use some, maybe some nucleus sampling methodology also in this but more about this topic in my next video.